MG Ryan back with you. And yes, we got a Metropolitan in the shop. And for those of you who have been with me for a while, you might remember this car as one I had in the old shop uh, roughly two years ago where I did some updates on putting a main wiring harness in it. Well, it's back. So in the fall, he said he was noticing the brakes were a little soft feeling. And then he took it and had some paintwork done to it. The red part here has been resprayed. And um, bringing it back from getting it painted, a couple of wheels were trying to lock up on them, the brakes. So, yeah, a couple odd conflicting, seemingly conflicting problems there. Now, I didn't get any real video of working on it because I was working with my new shop helper, so we didn't get to film anything. Uh, it's a little bit much to work with, work with him, show him what need, how to work on these cars and be filming things at the same time, so we didn't film it. But um, he had brought me all the parts I could possibly need, except for one that we ended up needing. <laughs> when we got into it, we found out that Basically, the car is not being driven enough, and even though the wheel cylinders that were in this thing really are only about five or so years old, about half of them were frozen. So that's where the brakes was coming at, and the master cylinder was looking a little bit tired. It was kind of old. I think it's the one that was in it when he bought the car. So we ended up doing uh, the master cylinder, um, wheel cylinders, and we got into it, the brake cable, or more appropriately, the parking brake cable, was completely froze up. Could not get this to move and do any adjustments whatsoever. And um, that was preventing us from actually getting a decent adjustment on the rear brakes after replacing the drums. Because the drums here uh, did some measuring and they were 30 thousandths over the maximum recommended diameter, which meant we were really at the end of the adjustments. Um, so, and they were slightly uh, out around too, and he had brought new drums with it, so on went the new drums as well, and we put new front shoes on it because the right front had gotten kind of hot and uh, we were starting to lose some, some material off the, off the shoes and didn't want to trust them. And, and we ended up doing a couple of springs as well because he had some springs with it and there was one or two springs that were a little, looking a little iffy. But now, brakes feel great. Good high, solid pedal, pulls up smooth, does everything it's supposed to do. So one thing I had noticed on this car previously when working on it was the shifter on this thing really was the proverbial spoon in a pudding bowl. It was a crapshoot. You just kind of put it where you think it's supposed to be and let out the clutch and see if it actually went into gear. And if it didn't, then try again. You know, it, you literally couldn't feel anything and you couldn't tell what you were doing at all. So when I was under it messing with the brakes, I actually grabbed a hold of these things and moved these, and these things, both of them, flopped around like wet noodles. The nuts were tight, but they were just flopping around. So what I did was actually just took the nuts off, put lock washers on it. Now, they don't move. They still move back and forth like they should easily, but they don't move side to side. Then I went ahead and stuck a washer here and here to take up some of the slack because there was way too much slack there. And what a difference that made. It's completely night and day. You can actually tell whether you're in the first reverse gate or the, the second third gate and feel it actually go into all gears except reverse, that one's still, or fourth. Fourth still feels a little iffy, but reverse, first and second, you can definitely tell which, 
what you're doing and feel them going into gear now. So if you have a Metropolitan and you're having that problem, check all this stuff. That's okay. Yeah, it sounds like a 